Going back to CERN. Why CERN is a little bit scary is if you start reading about Shiva, you really do get freaked out. Not from a conspiratorial place, just from a regular place. Shiva is a god that is powerful and will restart the cycle of life and death to uh, basically keep the process of life going. Shiva is known as the destroyer in the Trimurti, a Hindu trinity that includes Brahma and Vishnu. Now, a Hindu trinity, I told you, there's a lot in common between religions all throughout the world, even though people want to act like they're completely different. A Hindu trinity. Supreme being, god of destruction, destroyer of evil, the god of yoga, meditation, and the arts. Now, Shiva is represented as being able to take on a human form and influence the uh, realm of man. Accord to, according to Shiavism sect, the highest form of Shiva is formless, limitless, transcendent, and unchanging absolute Brahman, or, you know, the energy of life. And the primal Atman, or the soul, the self of the universe. So they insinuate that the universe is a living thing, living and breathing. It's like a heartbeat. There are many both benevolent and fearsome depictions of Shiva. In benevolent, she, it is, he is depicted as an omniscient yogi who lives in his aesthetic life on Mount Kalish, as well as a householder with poverty and has two children. Let's go down, though. Vedic origins. Dude, these batteries die way too fast. Now listen to this. Similarities between the iconography and theologies of Shiva with Greek and European deities have led proposals for an Indo-European link for Shiva, or lateral exchanges with ancient Central Asian cultures. His contrasting aspects, such as being terrifying or blissful, depending on the situation, are similar to those of the Greek god Dionysus, as are their iconic associations with bull, snakes, anger, bravery, dancing, and a carefree life. The ancient Greek text of the time of Alexander the Great calls Shiva an Indian Dionysus, or alternatively called Dionysus, god of the Orient. Similarly, the use of the phallic symbol as an icon for Shiva is also found for Irish, Nordic, and Greek. Roman deities, as was the idea of the an aniconic column linking heaven and earth among early Indo-Iranian Iran's uh, states, Roger Woodward and others contest such proposals, suggesting Shiva to have emerged from an indigenous pre-Aryan tribal origin. So basically, a lot of people will tell you, yeah, even though the stories are way similar, no, there's no link. But anyone that reads the damn books themselves are like, dude, this all is the same. It all sounds the exact same. It's almost like all throughout the world, there are the same descriptions of our past, different names of all the players, a trinity, saviors, and how would that happen? How would people in the Americas who seemingly, according to archaeology, are cut off from the Orient or Asia or uh, anywhere else, Europe, but how do these... Themes, theories, and and different um, you know events that have happened in the past all have a presence in every religious text. But they and then they go very far to tell you that there are no similarities. It's just really weird, and it forms almost a conspiratorial mindset where it's like, why is it that they want us to believe that all these different deities are so different, all these different gods and religions are so different when really 
they know the Romans and the Greeks basically are the same ones with different names. And it seems like that's the same for the Vedic, the Indian, the Assyrian, the Sumerian, as a, the Zoroastrian even. The whole theme of at the end of Christianity, Revelation, sounds exactly like the Zoroastrian end battle of the universe where a hero or a savior battles a dragon or a hydra or a snake with many heads for the end fight between good and evil with every other living being taking a side either with the hydra or with the hero and fighting it out to see which side remains before the earth restarts again and people ascend to heaven go back down to earth to play the next drama opera out this is every religion almost. It's just that it, you know, it look, it sounds like people, as they told the story as it went across the world, started to change parts of it to suit their political needs. Shiva, as we know him today, shares many features with the Vedic god Rudra. Both Shiva and Rudra are viewed as the same personality in Hindu scriptures. The two names are used synonymously. Rudra, the god of the roaring storm, portrayed in accordance with the elements he represents, fierce and destructive. The oldest surviving text of Hinduism is the Rig Veda, which is dated back to 1700 and 1100 before Christ, based on linguistic and philological, philo, philological, philological evidence. A god named Rudra is mentioned in the Rig Veda. The name Rudra is still used as a name for Shiva. He is described as the father of the Rudras, a group of gods or storm gods. The Rig Veda states that the deity Rudra has two natures, a wild and cruel Rudra and another that's kind and tranquil, Shiva. The Vedic texts do not mention bull or any other animal as a transport vehicle. However, post-Vedic texts such as the Mahabharata and the Karuna state the Nandi bull and the Indian Zebu in particular is a vehicle of Rudra and Shiva, thereby unmistakably linking them as the same. What am I trying to say? Even though we have all this data that, sh that shows this, people will stand up and say, that's not true. You can read it in the book yourself, but that's not true. According to Wendy Doniger, the Puranic Shiva is a continuation of the Vedic Indra. She gives several reasons for her hypothesis. Both are associated with mountains, rivers, male fertility, fierceness, fearlessness, warfare, transgression of established mores, the Om sound, the supreme self in the Rig Veda. The term Siva is used to refer to Indra, and Indra, like Shiva, is likened to a bull. In the Rig Veda, Rudra is the father of the Marats, but is never associated with their warlike exploits as Indra. Anyway, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that... Does it now make sense why CERN puts Shiva in front of its facility? Does it make sense that, you know, all these different things come together like the three sixes here? Whether or not you believe it's evil or not, the sign of man, the sign of the beast, whatever. Isn't it a little bit strange? Even more strange? What if? They are worshipping Shiva at CERN. The ancient Vedic texts give them instruction for how to build the facility. They just give us an explanation that they're researching my science, right? When really, what if every society of man is ended or begun by breaking through some type of veil that separates what we are here on the earth from what we really are from. Everybody says that the earth is like a simulation almost. It's almost like we're plugged into our bodies through a soul, like through a computer into a video game. So wouldn't that mean that somewhere across the veil of this reality, we could just really be our true selves, our true immortal selves, as it's mentioned in almost every religion that souls are immortal. Everyone, all throughout history and going back to the beginning. What if this is a simulation? What if this is like a computer box here on the earth, perfectly set up for us to never be able to find out 
the true nature of our reality from inside the box. But by dying and being reborn, we are passing through a veil over here. And what if the true way to, if, let's say, if this is true, let's say if our reality is based around, you know, some type of simulation and us being here on the earth, you know, and that doesn't take away from religion. Because for all we know, there could be a God over here and it could be heaven and it could be the same way it's described in all the books across the world, right? All the different events happening, all these different things represented across the world, good and evil, you know, living your life is a test. When you die being weighed for your life, once you get back across the boundary, like it says in every single book out there, regardless of the time or the area of the earth, what if? Restarting the entirety of the restarting the entire simulation. What if there is a fail safe inside the simulation? Now I know this is a big what if, just a thought that I have, so hear me out. Like I said, if we're plugged into a simulation, which is the earth, from across a veil. Like we're all sitting back in a matrix chair plugged in right now. That's that's why we go to sleep and that's why we have all these dreams and all these different feelings. That's why every human that's ever existed on the earth writes books about how you're going to die and be judged and the same different iconography through every religion, right? What if in order to restart this whole thing, and that's exactly what Shiva is said to be, what if to do it, you have to learn the true nature of this existence by studying the finer particles of the existence. And what if you finally do break through either by gaining a looking glass from this existence over into wherever it is we're plugged in from, whatever the other places we're plugged in from, whatever religion you believe says it is. The wire in our head links us over here to this realm while we're alive. When we die, they unplug the wire and we're back over here, right? What if looking through a looking glass and figuring out the nature and seeing us plugged in is the thing that will restart the whole simulation? I'm only calling it a simulation because, you know, that's what people say, but we'll just say reality. Now, what if there was, you know, a way to prove it? At CERN, like I said, they are taking very heavy particles and they're sending them in circles until they get up to the speed of light almost. They smash them together, creating bursts of energy that are hot enough and similar enough, hotter than our sun, hot enough and similar to the beginning of existence during the Big Bang. By the way, almost every religion says the same thing about how the universe was created. A word was spoken by the supreme being, whatever religion you have, whichever creator it is, a word was spoken by the creator and all of existence erupted outward in a flash of light. Sounds like a big bang. Now, what if studying the things that make up the very existence, which we've already looked at and considered that it's exactly like information, right? And what if finding the you know perfect way of recreating that one little place? What if that one spot when you get that when you when you move these particles that almost to the speed of light and you get them up there till they're almost at the speed of light crash physical particles together? What is that really doing? What is it really doing? What is photons? What is light? Light is energy without mass, right? And that's why light can travel across the room in the blink of an eye, right? So if you took all the mass out of anything, like a, like a, a particle, it would become a light particle. No, I know there's a lot of problems with that statement, but essentially, right? Now, imagine taking two physical, two you know, physical things here in this reality, two physical balls, little tiny lead atoms, basically turning them into light and then smashing them together because that's what's happened. That's what they're trying to do at CERN. <clears throat> what if by taking something physical 
and smashing it together will the resulting little hole that's made is a glimpse like i said through the barrier it almost like makes this little cut hole that lets you peek through and i know it sounds crazy but that's what some people think that's one theory and it's kind of like if you sit down and think about it enough you'd say to yourself how would we see through to the other side of if there is another side of our reality how do you see through it well what if you take physical things make them behave like light or spiritual or energy pure energy so you're essentially transforming something physical into as close as it can get to the spirit world or the you know the world of energy right and then you know smash it together maybe it will tear through reality a little bit what is really strange is we have not only CERN scientists saying that they're going to open doors to other dimensions they literally said this themselves now i know they mean physical dimensions and they're probably not describing what we probably aren't thinking of the same thing they're trying to describe right but also what was the other one we had CERN scientists doing it and then all the d-wave computers so remember when kev baker was talking to me d-wave computers literally the people that created it said that they are making computers that can work in other dimensions and communicate through dimensions e-wave a dimensional wave i don't know i know it sounds crazy how's that the fuck that's a quantum computing system right there NASA begins exploring quantum computing. Holy shit, dude. Fucking crazy. Really, there's only small clues to think this way. All I know is, man, when you put the most ancient god mentioned, the god that supposedly forms the universe destroys it, recreates it, and has a destructive and terrible nature, but also a loving and kind nature. And you take that God and embody it at the scientific place where they are trying to smash particles together to try to see through, the, through our world. They're trying to let loose a Higgs boson to measure gravity. You know, what if gravity is Shiva? And I know that I'm going to end it with this because I'm getting way out there, but listen to me. Now, gravity, so if you have a universe, and I always explain a universe as a square, right? And you take a universe and pour all these um, particles of hydrogen into the universe, right? All of them would just bounce off each other. Nature says what is natural is that they wouldn't pull together to form things. What if, you know, like all the ancient texts say, the, the force that does bring things together, that makes organized things out of pure chaos, what if it is a creator, a god? What if gravity... Because without gravity, everything bounces off each other. You can recreate a universe inside a computer. If you don't put gravity in it, you never get anything. It all just bounces around. But you put the slightest force of gravity in, and after large amounts of time, things start forming and creating and gathering and changing shape and eventually mold in to a walking, talking, thinking being, according to science. Anyway, it's just a thought I've had lately. I just thought I'd share it with you guys. I know, late night sharing big thoughts like this isn't a good idea 